Hi there, Prayer Plant Girl here. This morning I'm out in my garden and I, I'm going to go through and do a little bit of uh, pruning and uh, tying up of my tomatoes, probably work on my cucumbers a little bit. I have a broccoli that needs to be harvested. It's just kind of a little general going through. I like to do this at least a few times a week, if not every day, just to have a quick look and see what needs to be done. And about once a week I come out and do the, like, the pruning and the tying, tying up and that. Um, so I thought you might find some of that interesting to see how I do these things. So come along and let's get started. There are uh, two types of tomatoes um, that you will be growing in your garden. You might have a staking tomato or indeterminate tomato. And that's the kind that are gonna just keep growing really, really tall and produce tomatoes over a very long time. Um, and they'll kind of start at the bottom of the plant usually and, and work their way up the plant producing uh, trusses of tomatoes or single tomatoes, however they, they decide to develop. Um, and they, they can be pruned back um, quite heavily and most people tend to prune them into a single, a single um, stem going up with just a few branches off the sides. Um, and I'll get into that a bit more in a minute here. But the other kind is a bush or determinant tomato. And they tend to, people tend to let them get quite bushy because they'll develop just a lot of tomatoes all at once. Anywhere that they can develop tomatoes off of the plant, they'll do that in just a short period of time. I find it's over about two months in my climate here in Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, so that is most of our summer and tomato productive season. But uh, so most people will let those because once they kind of produce all their tomatoes, they're not going to keep going and producing more. So most people will will kind of let them grow out and become more bushy and not so tall um, and then just get as many tomatoes off of them as they can. So you'll probably see one of those words on your package when you purchase tomato seeds or on the little tag when you um, purchase starts in the store. You don't necessarily have to prune tomatoes or, or stake them, uh, but it can help to keep your plants healthier and uh, keep them from breaking off in the wind and such. So um, the reason it keeps it healthier is if you have, especially if they're growing close together like I have mine, and you don't have enough air circulation that can promote more disease in the plant. And when you prune them back, it also lets more light get to the tomatoes, which can help them with ripening. So um, most of my tomatoes are a staking or indeterminate variety. Um, I prune them mostly because I grow them really close together. They're spaced at most 18 inches. Some of them are 12 inches apart. So that's about 30 uh, to 45 centimeters. And uh, that just helps me to be able to keep a lot of tomatoes in a, a small amount of space so that uh, I can just have more things in my garden. So right here, I have a black crim tomato. And uh, I'm just gonna bring it around to this side of the stake so you can see it a little bit better. But you can see, hopefully you can tell here, this is the main stem coming up the plant. And if you look at the, the side shoot coming off here and the main stem, there is a small uh, stem or shoot trying to form in there. And I'm just gonna take that off so that it doesn't produce another large main stem because that's what will happen with these side shoots that are kind of in this, this V here between a, a side shoot and the main stem. If you let these other shoots come off, they'll try and produce another main stem, which will produce flowers. It will get um, shoots with flowers like this on it. Um, and it will produce more leaves and get really crowded plants. So you could get a lot more fruit. It tends to be smaller fruit if you let lots develop on the plants, but um, you could let that happen. Uh, but it's not as necessary with the, the staking tomatoes. So anyways, I've taken this off. If they get any larger than uh, this size, you probably want to come in with some snips to trim them off. But luckily I've been keeping up with this plant, so I don't need to worry about that. And then this plant is uh, getting to the point where I could stake it again. Um, I don't think you can see, but I have a tie just down here. Tying this one just loosely, you see how loose it is, that it slides up and down a little bit. Um, holding the plant on. And this one I will probably leave, and next week I'll probably come in and tie it in about here. It's another 30 centimeters or so, and I would tie it to this part of the stem. So 
For now, we'll just leave it here. The wind blows this way, so if I leave it like this, the cane's gonna support this top growth. It's not really heavy up here. And uh, then I just don't need ties, you know, every eight centimeters or so. But that's what I'm gonna be going through and looking for with my plants. I'm just gonna back you up so you can see down this full stem so you can see how much I've pruned down off the bottom of it. So you can see there's the top. And as you go down, you can see how much I've taken off this stem down here. Now I can see one little set of leaves right there. And I'm just gonna go in and snip, snip that off because I don't need it. Um, it won't help the plant and it's just stopping airflow through there as it gets larger. So I see another one right beside it that has started to produce some side suckers off of here too. I'll take those off while I'm down here and then I'm going to work my way up the plant and now it should be pretty much pruned up this whole plant. It's a little bit close to the next one so it's a little bit harder to see. But if you look in all these intersecting spots, there's one trying to pop out here. Just pop that out and there's another plant behind it. If you look up here as we go up and you see in here, I don't know how you can see, see there's the fruiting branch coming off up here but down between the main stem and the side shoot there's another little sucker it's called coming off there and if you very carefully get in here there's another sucker between where the fruiting branch is and the, the main branch so I'm just going to pop that one out as well and that plant is done and again I do keep up with these uh, trying to come out every week and prune them and tie them on and so this one doesn't need to be staked up quite yet but again probably next week I'll be staking this one tying it on again tying it onto the stake at another intersection up here. I thought I'd bring you in here to look at this real quick because it's kind of a, a different situation and this is how some people do it um, is this is a staking tomato and hopefully you can see the stem down here is the main stem and then it got broken or it split and didn't get caught in time and grew this really large side branch um, off of the main stem which is over over here so the main stem is going up the stake here being tied off and then there's this other large stem and I've been just letting it grow and you can see if you let these uh, these larger stems continue to grow they will produce fruit off of them and so I've just let this one go I don't know how well you can see but just below here is where the uh, the leafing branch would have been cut off and so I don't know what happened there exactly but um, I'm gonna bring this over because it's getting quite heavy now that it has fruit and tie it to the stake that I have in here for the peppers just to give it some space and air movement between from the other plants um, and I'm actually gonna come in and above where uh, this fruit is set I'm gonna cut off where it's trying to get larger and produce more fruit here and I'll let it set these couple of fruit that are on it. And then I'm gonna trim this branch back because the rest of the stem is quite, the rest of the plant is quite healthy and looking great. So I don't need to let it continue to branch out. Looks like it actually split up here again. So I've somehow let this one get a little jungly. This stem over here looks like it's not producing any fruit or anything. So I'm actually gonna I think take it off and let this continue as the main stem. Hopefully you can see all that in there. This one has gotten kind of crazy and they'll do that if you let them and uh, they can get to be quite a huge plant. And that makes it hard to keep them supporting their large fruit and uh, not fall over and break on you. So you can see this plant, hopefully you can see this with all these leaves in the way. It starts at the bottom, branches off there, has fruit on it keeps going up through here it's up 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 the sun is going to make it harder to show you this but and then again here it's branched off into two two branches so one's going this way this is actually the back one is the one that I actually have tied off and this one is um, 
not tied off. And when I look at it, I think this was the sucker. So this is the one I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna look and see if there's any fruit coming off of this actual branch before I make that cut. So it looks like the fruit is coming off of the other stem. And I have tied this one on, but I'm gonna undo this tie because the other one is actually tied on. I think it's actually the stem I'd rather keep. So sometimes, we don't realize we've let a plant get pretty out of control. So I don't know how well you can see that big stem I just took off. And it was trying to set more fruit. You can see there's flowers at the top. But that's gonna get to be a lot of big branches that are gonna get really heavy and probably wind up breaking this um, plant off. So I'd rather just let it have one main stem, produce nice large fruit and uh, not have broken stems in the end. I could break my whole plant. So then I'll come I can see a few more suckers. This one really wants to grow. It'd be a huge plant here. But um, I'm gonna bring it up, wrap around the stake. And this one has gotten quite tall here, so I'm gonna take this, this tie that I just took off the other branch. It's just a Velcro tie. Um, wrap it around the main stem up here, tie it on, and then I can see some more suckers coming off. Just get rid of those while I'm in here. And hopefully I've got this plant back down to one main stem plus a small little bit that's producing a couple tomatoes and I'll let it do that before I take it off. So I'm gonna keep going through uh, all these uh, indeterminate or staking tomatoes that I have and uh, doing that little bit of pruning and staking them up. I'll also be looking to see if any of my peppers um, need so far. I have a stake put in, but I haven't had to actually stake any of them. This one is getting to the point where I might want to tie this, this stem off here before it gets heavy with fruit on it. Um, but so far, they've been pretty sturdy. I grow them really close together, so they usually stay pretty sturdy with one another here. Um, but I'll be going through all my tomatoes, getting those all pruned, any tied up that need to be tied up. And when I get around to where my um, bush tomatoes are, I'll give you a little look at those so you can have an idea of what I do to kind of take care of them and keep them healthy, even though they don't need as much pruning and training as uh, the staking tomatoes do. I've cleaned up this bed here, and I think you can see um, how much less leaf um, action is happening down at the bottom of the plants. It's focused more towards the tops. Um, and then if you come over to this side here, you can see it's pretty crazy and bushy. And I've actually gone through some of these already. Most of the plants on the, this side here of this particular bed um, are bush type tomatoes or determinate tomatoes. So I can't do too much pruning on them, but I will do some. So I thought I'd show you some of the things that I do to kind of help keep the bush tomatoes in check and uh, healthy and help promote airflow. So right here I have a Roma tomato and you can see this leaf branch is hanging down. It's almost touching the ground um, and it doesn't need to be there. So it's not going to produce any um, flowers or fruit off of this branch. So I'm gonna take it out, get rid of it. You can see where that branch came out here. There's one of those, um, those sucker type branches coming up and it's producing, like I had shown before, it's gonna produce a whole shoot, like a new plant here. You could cut these off actually and pop them in the soil, water them well, or put them in a cup of water and they will grow roots. You could have a whole new plant that way. But um, with a bush plant, you can leave some of these on. So I will leave this on and let it produce some tomatoes. You can see lots of tomatoes hopefully here. I'm gonna just get these leaves out of your way because they're not necessary. You see a whole truss of nice tomatoes coming on right here. There's another one off of this side place here. And they're just producing everywhere. And that's what you want with a bush tomato. You want them producing lots of tomatoes all over. But um, any branches that are coming down, reaching to the ground, I'm gonna take out. Um, branches that are really getting intermingled between the plants, I'm also gonna trim back. So I could take like, if this branch was reaching into another branch like this, I could take this branch and just trim it a little bit smaller. It's okay to take this little piece off here 
um, and that'll just help to have some airflow and have the plants not rubbing on each other so much. This plant right here looks like it could use with do with a little bit of staking as well. So I'll just find kind of a strong point on it and um, tie it to the stake here. And in fact, I have two ties on this plant already. The very bottom tie isn't necessary anymore. Um, so I'm just gonna remove that one. And I'll just bring it up higher on the plant. These are little ties I'm trying this year for the first time. I got them from Bessie's Seeds. And uh, I don't know what I think of them yet. I kind of feel like they're not gonna last more than a season. Um, but they do seem to support the plants, even though they kind of look flimsy. We'll go down one more branch. So then that's tied up. It'll give it some more support because when these bush tomatoes especially are growing so much fruit on them, they get really, really heavy. So you want to make sure they're well supported. I'm going to try and just wrap this branch around here a bit. Try and let the stake help support it a bit that way as well. Now I'm hoping that you'll be able to see in here this leaf. I'm going to take out this leaf has a lot of aphids on it and I'm not super concerned about the aphids. I've had lots of um, predators in here so I'm not too worried about having the odd aphid. This leaf has a lot of broken damaged points on it and uh, I'm just going to take it out because it's starting to look a little bit unhealthy there with the discoloration and so if there is some sort of disease getting caused by those aphids I want to get it out of there so it's not spreading. Now this branch here is really hanging and getting really heavy it does have some flowers coming on it so but it feels like it's not very a nice sturdy branch so I'm going to just try and take as much weight off of it as I can for right now and then I might wind up tying it to this this stake that uh, this uh, pepper is on here the peppers are producing and tied to it too, but if I just take this and tie it off here, that might give it a little bit more support. But I'm gonna cut it back. Actually, where's the flowers? The flowers are back here. So I'm actually just gonna cut this right back to where the flowering part is and take off any leaves below that and that'll just take some of the weight off. And once it produces fruit, I may need to come in with some sort of stake to give this some more support or just extend, I could extend a string from one of these other stakes or over to this stake um, to give it support if I need to. So anything that's low down below where the plants are forming um, flowers, I like to just take that off so the air can move through. So right here, this is a Manitoba tomato, and I've got you right down at the bottom of it, because I'm going to show you this really good example. Um, there's actually two here that have done this. So there's one back here. Well, I'll show you the front one first. We'll get out of the way. So you can see there was a big stem coming off of this where it had was trying to split into two plants. So I was kind of letting it, but I guess I hadn't got this side shoot um, staked or tied up, and it's broken here. So that's just inviting disease and that in there if I keep letting it just slowly peel back. So I'm going to just take this big piece out of here. This is rhubarb leaves. That's not, or I think, it's not tomato anyways, whatever that is there. Um, and you see this big branch that I'm pulling out of here that uh, was trying to, to be a tomato, grow tomatoes, but um, it just broke off from the weight because these get these bush varieties especially if I get so heavy even just they're branching with all their leaves so I don't know how well you can see back to the next one here but it's done the same thing so I'm just going to go in and snip it off before it keeps tearing down the stem and pop this one out and then so now I can see this branch here 
it's not producing anything that looks like it's going to be flowering or producing fruit. And I'm just going to get rid of it because it's getting really full in here um, and the airflow isn't getting through here very well. This next one does have flowering trusses on, so I'll get, um, I'll probably have to get some twine to reach over to the stake here and just stake it up a little bit. I know the sun's kind of in your eyes here. There's not a good angle, but um, I'm just going to go through. I'm going to put it around the stem, and hopefully you can see that. I'm going to cross these two and then bring them back. And I'm going to take it down, try and not catch this big stem in so it's not rubbing. And then tie it to the stake that's in the ground here, just to give that support because it is um, putting out flower trusses and so I don't want to lose that uh, truss off the tomato there. So we'll leave that like that to keep going. Um, there's some flowers on this one. This one's producing flowers. This here is not. This is just extra leaves, crossing branches, getting in the way. I'm going to take this one out um, and this lower one as well. Just like again, just promotes some airflow. They're not, I mean, you need to leave some plants. You can't leave it bare and just flowers because the, the leaves help to photosynthesize and give energy to the plant. But um, it's okay to take some of them out and allow some airflow through there. There's a big branch coming off this way too that's just growing into the other plants. So I don't think you see it, but I'm gonna take it off. Um, I do like to wait till the plants have been in the ground a while till they start doing anything too major like this. So if you're wondering why I've let this kind of get this big, I just find it easier to see what's going on for some of these branches, especially the bush tomatoes, once I've let them go a little bit. So yeah, there's some more of those uh, Manitoba tomatoes back there that I'll be dealing with doing that. But you can see I'm trying to leave these kind of suckering branches on my bush tomatoes. So you can see where I cut off a main branch off, like a, a main branch off of what, this is the main stem here. And then there would have been a branch here that I took off. This is the sucker. The sucker is where the flowers are going to come out. So that's the one I want to leave on with these. Okay, so I've gone through and I think I've gotten all the pruning done that I, I want to do in here for this week. Um, but what I wanted to show you here is I have a little bit different um, trellising system um, for this, for this uh, row of plants right in here. So most of these are my thornburns, terracotta, and there's a couple of mortgage lifters in here as well. Actually, it's probably about half and half thornburns and, ter and uh, mortgage lifter. Uh, but what I've done is, I believe this is called the California weave, but I've just put a couple of good strong stakes in and then I've wrapped some string between the stakes. I just twisted it around the center one to give it a little bit more support and wrapped around the ends and back. And then I'm just literally weaving the plants up through these strings. So it goes between and then the next one it'll go, go in front. So. I think you'll be able to see here on this one what I'm doing. So you see though the plant is behind this string here. But as it grows, I'm gonna come up in front of the next one. And this is actually the main stem here, so I'm gonna try and get it going in front like that. And I can see some mortgage lifter and I missed a couple of suckers on it. So hopefully you can see there how I'm going, kind of just bringing the plant back and forth between the rows of string, and then that will help it so they can move with the wind, um, but they shouldn't break off. They should get enough support from the string here. So that's what I'm trying with these here. I've done this before. It works all right. Um, and maybe because my ground is soft, I find sometimes it's just not enough support with this much weight on the strings that can knock the posts over, but um, being that it's on this side of the, the bed and I have a row of tomatoes on the other side that are all staked to their own stake, I thought the wind usually comes this way towards the camera, so I thought I should give a bit more wind break here. I thought that was a safe place to try it again because I was running out of stakes and I just couldn't find more of these big, strong um, bamboo canes that I like um, in time to get these staked up. I'll dump the rest of these trimmings I took off the tomatoes into my compost and uh, then I'm going to get over to this broccoli here. My tomato pruning fingers. You know you've been working in the tomatoes when they look like that. 
Okay, there's this nice big broccoli here. Let me get it uncovered. <clears throat> I've removed the lower clips off of my <clears throat> off of my bars here, so I can just lift this up right now. Have a peek. So I have one good head right here, and I, there's another one getting close back there. This beautiful head of broccoli here. I'm going to take this today. I believe this is green magic. It's already starting to put side, side sprouts out. It's turned yellow a little bit. I probably could have taken it a day or two ago. I was out of town yesterday. So there's the main head right there. Isn't that a beauty? And then it was already starting to put out some side side shoots there, so I took those as well. So start time to get that harvest basket out and start harvesting things, eh? I love that time of year. If you're harvesting things like cauliflower and broccoli and you're not gonna be going in right away, put it in the shade. These will blow out really quickly in the hot sun if you just leave them sitting there. So I'm gonna pop that back in the shade. It's not super hot out today, so it should be okay there in the shade for a few minutes. There, I think even with the shadows, you'll be able to see that one nice little head down there. This is where I took one the other day and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of time to see if it'll send out some side shoots. If it doesn't, then I'll cut it off so the more sun gets to the other plants. Down in here, I can't see what's on the screen very well here, but I have a nice head of cauliflower forming up. This is the Freedom variety, and you can probably tell it's a self-wrapping variety, and it's really wrapping around the heads really tight. I'm, I'm having trouble telling unless I really get in here and get digging, if I even have cauliflower in these plants. Um, I've had other varieties that say they're self-wrapping that certainly do not wrap like that, so that's been really a nice bonus for me to have them being kept so nicely out of the sun. You you wrap or you try and cover the heads so that they don't blow out. Um, there's another little one just forming in there. You wrap them so they don't blow out and uh, get discolored and that can turn the taste bitter. I think I have another little one in here. Yeah, these have a bit of a purpley leaf. Are these going to be the graffiti? Because they're really wrapping nice too, but the graffiti, I haven't found a wrap well for me in the past. I don't see a tag for it, so I'll have to wait, but the leaves do look a bit more purple on these, so it might be a graffiti, which is a purple head of cauliflower. So I was in here looking at this, the other side of the cauliflower and broccoli bed, and I noticed these big holes in the leaves, and I thought that's odd because I keep them covered up so much. I'm pretty sure it's not uh, cabbage whites or any other type of, you know, cabbage loper or anything that's in here. Eating at these, uh, kind of looked around. I didn't see any signs of worms or eggs or anything on them. So that must be um, slugs. And sure enough, I come over to this plant here. What do I see? A big old slug. Well, not big actually, she's a little baby. But where there's one, there's more. So get rid of that guy. And I'll have to come out here in the evening, I guess, one night and, well, a few nights and have a good look around. You can see, hopefully they don't get at, um, I've just seeded some more little cauliflowers hoping to get um, them growing up enough to get a fall crop. And I have some young plants in here that I transplanted a while ago, just to kind of secession crop. So hopefully the onions don't, or the slugs don't get to those. Here's one of my Eucapa lettuces. Now this one's heading up kind of weird. I'm not sure what happened there, if it fell over. It started to head up here and fell over and got heavy. I don't know, but I've taken at least one already. And that one, I'll take that soon. 
Yeah, my cabbage, I just was, when I was over here, I thought it looks like I might have. Oh, it's so close. It's nice and firm. This is a Katerina cabbage. They're really, I forget what they are, like 45 day or something. Uh, that'll come probably by the, by the weekend. I'll take that one out. Okay, so let's look at these cucumbers and see what needs to be done with them. I think I could probably tie some up or get them trained up on the trellis a bit here anyways. Um, just gonna have a real quick look at them because I do have that broccoli that I cut and I wanna get it in the house. So I'm just gonna go through real quick. Like I said, I wanna get that broccoli in, but I'm trying to keep these going kind of in their own so they all have their own kind of spot to, to vine on here. So I just bring, come out every once in a while and just kind of wrap them and I'll take their tendrils and show them where to go. And if I have one that's really not listening, then I'll eventually come and get a, this like a Velcro tie and just tie it to the stake and that's usually enough. This one here has wanted to move over to this bar over here, but I want it back here so I just carefully unwound the tendril and now that the tendril has that winding on it if I go the right direction it'll wind back on here for me really easily and it'll know this is where it's supposed to be and I came through a few days ago and kind of the same as with the tomatoes I cut them back to just a few main stems and eventually I'm gonna have to come in here and trim out some of these bottom leaves. I haven't done that yet with the cucumbers, but um, that'll help the pollinators find the flowers and help the cucumbers to kind of ripen up on the bottom. But I don't think that's gonna be a job for this morning. I have other things to do and I haven't had breakfast yet. It's almost lunchtime. I can see this one squash over here. Really wants to be a cucumber. back on your trellis. So I hope you've enjoyed this little wander through my garden this morning to see how I kind of keep things kind of pruned and trained and trellised and and under control in this space. I have a lot of plants in here so I need to to keep on top of them or uh, it'll just turn into an unruly jungle where nothing's going to grow well and healthy. Uh, so like I said I do the cucumbers, the pruning, the trimming very similar to how I do the tomatoes. If you want a more in-depth um, look at that, I can I can give you one. Just put it in the comments down below. But I feel like this got kind of into a long video already, and I kind of veered off into the brassicas there for a minute. So, um, and I want to get that broccoli in the house. Like I said, it's getting late. But uh, thanks for sticking with me and, and watching and supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hard at work. Always close by.